<laughs> well, hello there, Helen. How are you? Hey, I'm really good. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you giving us some time to chat and tell us about your story. Um, why don't you begin by telling me a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with the whole fertility concept and, and deciding to freeze your eggs? Well, basically, I, gosh, I'd had one of those conversations with one of my friends who works in medical sales where, you know, you're th saying, oh, I don't know if it's ever going to happen for me and blah, blah, blah. Um, it was years ago, like before it became even an issue, but we were just having a chat and she said, well, I always think that if I, if I get like to near my mid thirties, I'll just freeze my eggs. So she was the first person to mention it to me. And then I had um, a PhD supervisor who was going through IVF and could, her eggs weren't viable. She was in her late 30s. So she was having a real struggle uh, because of the quality of her eggs. And so she had, I'd sort of spoken to her about her experiences. And I said, you know what? I was thinking I might get mine frozen. And she just said, just do it because if you, you know, when you get to my age and, and you don't have them, it's, it's really worth if you need them and you don't have them, it's the worst. So it's worth just putting that security in place while your still eggs are still viable. Um, How so, old were you at then, the time? So I, when I started talking about it, it was about 30, 31. So, you know, like that kind of age when you would be thinking, all right, so like what's going to... You, you become aware of the quick passage of time, let's say. Right. What year was this? Um, I'm 35 now, so it's about four years ago. Yeah, okay, so four or like five two, years ago. 2012. Yeah, and then also what happened was I'd had that thought and then I saw a family friend and they were saying, oh, you know, no man in your life. And at the time, I, well, I still am single, but at the time I wasn't seeing anyone. And um, I said, no, you know, and I really do want a family one day. And... Um, we got chatting and he said that his wife had had the same problem in her late 30s. Uh, she tried to, because they only had one kid. So I was saying, did you not want more kids? Blah, blah, blah. You know, we're talk, having yeah. a chat about family and what you want from your future. And he said, no, no, no. She, we tried when she was in her late 30s, but uh, it was unsuccessful. And I said, oh, was that really painful? I know someone who's been through it. And she, he was like, yeah. I said, you know what? That um, I've been thinking of getting my eggs frozen. And again, he was like, just do it. Just don't even think about it. You know? Just so you had some really positive influences yeah. on from people that have struggled. And they said, yeah. encouraged you, go for it. Yeah, because that, that was, that's what I mean is the message that I'd got is one, a friend who worked in the medical kind of industry, who was just like, well, obviously that's available, so you might as well do it. And then right. two people who, who were in their late 30s when they tried to conceive and the eggs were an issue um, and who'd found that really painful. Yeah. yeah. One, one ended up not having another child, but they have one child and the other ended up um, adopting and adopting siblings, actually. So that's Aww. really lovely. But, I, and so I guess then it was just a question of, you know, do it Where? before you're 35. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then I was think you know, I turned sort of 32, either 32 or 33. And, um, and I was saying to my gynecologist, I'm thinking of getting my eggs frozen. And my gynecologist is like the don of all medicine in the UK. She's amazing. And uh, she's, like, really, really top in her field. So she was like, well, I know where you should go because they're really academic. They know their stuff. They wouldn't tell you to do something if it's not really of, uh, you know, time. You know, if, if you've got ages, they'll tell you, don't worry about it for now. Or they won't give you advice, like, one way or the other. They'll give you a balanced perspective. Right. So I knew that I was in safe hands because I had known my gynecologist for a while and she is an amazing uh, doctor and really respectful of women or people and your perspective and looks at very rarely for the medical profession looks at you as a whole person and knows her medical stuff but also you know has the personality that yeah, can see just, as more you, of a counselor like, yeah well just just she was, she's very no-nonsense, right? She's right. not sort of fluffy, but she's very much like, 
what else do you, you know, what, because I have a, an issue, a gynecological issue, basically. So, hi, frozen eggs and gynecology. Yep, hi. <laughs> and um, she she would always be really, like, interested in how I promote my well-being more generally and what works and my experience of my own body and things like that. So, and yet she's the top person. So I really trusted her. So and she I helped it. guide you to the clinic that you chose. Yeah. And which clinic did you choose? It was the Centre for Reproductive and Genetic Health. Yeah. In London. In London, yeah. Right. Near Kings. Yeah, and I feel like in our society, there's there's just hysteria about having your eggs frozen, and I get that it's expensive, and that's the issue, is the expense. But there's a lot about, well, you know, is it just depressed women like being hoodwinked into spending their money, or is it is it a massive big deal like physically? And I feel like, to me, it just wasn't that big a deal. Yeah. How did you do, how did you find ways to pay for it since uh, my dad paid for mine really yeah. that's so nice he invested yeah. in his future grandchildren basically yeah yeah it's great because I think you know I was in I was thirty three I guess when I started thinking about it and having the tests and stuff I just thirty four just after I had it done so I think I knew that that was the time that before thirty five was the time and that was all I knew was that the best time to have them frozen if I was going to was before 35 and I didn't right. know what else was going to happen in my life and so yeah my dad's just supported me on that yeah can we talk a little bit about how you felt like during the hormone stimulation and um and yeah. then the results from your freezing I was very ill right so Completely unconnected, I became ill a little way into the treatment. So I now look back, I know that I was getting ill anyway, but and I had, had this really, really strong illness. So like, I like had a flu or yeah, like a really, really, really bad throat infection. Oh my! And I was, oh, it was just awful. <laughs> and it was, and I mean, I was ill for a long time. So it's hard for me to say like how the hormones affected me because. I had such a bad illness when I was preparing for mm. it all. Um, obviously, by the time I was injecting, uh, I'd started to recover, but I was still very slow. So I was very slow anyway. And I think, it was, you know, just slow down. You've got to slow down. You can't be drinking and partying and all of this. But it was just a month out of my life that anyway, I was being a bit sort of slower and I was gentle on myself physically because I'd been poorly. But I didn't find it physically too bad. It felt a bit funny towards the end. It felt like you felt you felt weird, a little bit weird, like, like you, you knew they were there. Like you kind of felt, <laughs> I, I don't know about you, but I kind of felt pregnant. I've never been pregnant, but um, it felt like what you would think it would feel like. Right. And, and I, like, I thought I was freaking out the ends, and that was really, really easy. The only Injection I find hard was the last one because you have you have to do a bit more yourself and I'm a bit squeamish about chemicals and things like that and I was worried I'd get it wrong. Um, but other than that, I found it like really, really super easy. The, the, the hardest part for me was the actual fertility testing when she said to me, oh, you know, you're actually 25th percentile, so you're less than average. Now, I could be worse, I could be 5th percentile, but... She was like, your results are sort of below average. and um, So that was shocking? Yeah. And I was like, well, and she said, you're, you're fertile. So, um, you know, hello, fellas, I'm fertile. <laughs> but, but, Cheers uh, for being fertile. <laughs> <laughs> but, she, you, know, um, you know, you don't necessarily have, like, some women will have until they're 40, 41, 42, right. 43. Right. Um, you probably not so much, you know, so you, right. you might want to start so thinking about thank God that you took advantage of it because if you do wait later in life for, for kids, then you have the advantage of yeah. having your, be your own egg donor. I think if I waited until, like, yeah, yeah, I mean, 38, 39, you know, she was saying, if you're going to have your first, like, I reckon think about it when you're 38, like naturally. Yeah. yeah. If, if you want to do it naturally, think about it when you're 38. So 38. 39 if I'd have been which is what the people that I knew had done they'd waited until that age 
then you know there is a chance that I could struggle I mean hopefully that it won't come to that anyway I'd like I'd like for it to happen sooner than that sure. but you know I, I I don't have control over that unless I you know do do it kind of like on my own or yeah whatever and I, I'm I, I'd like to do it in with some someone who's enthusiastic about doing it with me and, and right. with like the a right partner. person so, yeah and so I, I'm kind of waiting think about you know not, not looking too much at my other options but yeah if I'd have just sort of not done anything about it it was good timing for me for sure right yeah but right. I found that hard I went home and cried my little eyes out because I felt so um out of control of my life if that makes sense I just totally. was like oh my god like your body just does stuff and you didn't know it you can't do anything about it and you can I mean there's always you can you can well like, it just felt like in that moment it was yeah. it was in control yeah yeah, yeah and, and and it is that thing of like your body is doing things you're aging whatever your love life newsflash is never under your control you know it like you can never be a hundred percent and you don't know what's going to happen and when you really deeply want something out of life which I do I really deeply do want to have a family at some point it's really hard to admit that it's hard to admit I really deeply want this and I really don't know uh you know if it will happen for me fundamentally and you can say oh yeah I know what will happen I know what happened but you know well, we don't know what the future holds. So that's the no. hardest part is that we can have the best intentions and the best plans, but life happens regardless. Yeah. 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 And that, and that's, I guess, because I'd experienced um, grief in my life. So I lost my mother in an accident, like, when I was 23, 24. Oh, wow. So I, I, think, I think maybe that's the difference is that I was like, well, I know that, life has its twists and turns so I was like what do I know for sure I know for sure that fertility declines and I know for sure that I have probably some okay quality eggs right now so I'm going to put some away just in case mm -hmm. um but the, and that makes so much sense until you bring in the physical side which for me wasn't an issue at all I think it's much harder the next stage when people are having the eggs put in like if they're doing IVF right, the transfers yeah, I think that's the, the more difficult part. And then, of course, the financial side, which, and that's where I think we have a problem because I don't think you should be sat there thinking, uh, will I get myself into debt at the off chance that I'll need these eggs? or right. just to have a family. Yeah, or will I risk it? And I've only got, like, I would ideally like to have done another round of, of, of it and how many did you, how many eggs did you get the first time? I've got eight. I've got eight frozen. Eight frozen. That's great. Yeah. So that's nice. But you know, I probably if I could have, but it isn't an insignificant amount of money. So then I did have that. Well, I'm, I don't. I won't do another round. But I know with eight, you know, I've got really, really. You, you've good got a good chance. chance. Yeah. And um, you know, we are advantaged. Um, we're about the same age, so we're advantaged that the technology has really come around compared to yeah. even four or five six years ago so we have the advantage of having vitrification and the fast freeze so yeah. our our eggs have a better chance of being viable at once they're and unfrozen because what I find as well is people are so like ill-informed like I had when I went to get um you know the STD testing yeah uh the doctor at the clinic was like why have you come and I said oh I'm getting my eggs frozen and she was like, why are you doing that? And I said, oh, look, we don't, we don't need to have this conversation. Like, honestly, I'm in safe hands. I know I am. Right. Well, in and your opinion, really doesn't matter. Really Just like take my blood. The top, people, the top people. And she went, well, egg, egg freezing is bullshit. They're just trying to get money out of women who, because they're desperate to have babies. Literally. I'm this not is desperate. Just <laughs> FYI. I'm, I doubt you are either. Yeah, I think like a lot of people that have the eggs frozen are the ones that are not. We're the not smart that. ones. <laughs> yeah, we're the ones that are family planning today <laughs> yeah. for our like, future I, I want it but I'm not willing to sort of trick 
someone into giving me this bag. Well, you know what's interesting is by being your own egg donor, you save yourself countless dollars in the long run. You pay for it up front or you pay for it on the back pay end. Either way, you're paying for it. So how do you want to pay for it? <laughs> And I like, I, I, it's really weird actually because I guess that's the next stage of my thinking is that like, um, at what point do you be using my own eggs yeah. that are frozen yeah. now? It would be the same chances and at least I don't have to make that decision at the age of 38 or 37. I can make it a little bit later because I've yeah. got similar yeah. chances whether if I do it at 40, 41, 42. So, right. Um, but yeah, because it's all these like bloody decisions we have to make. It, it, do you know what it is? Is I'm it's it is really really my opinion is is that the subtext is that women are can't really make decisions for themselves. That they always have to be being emotionally abused, sort of emotionally manipulated because they've got all these really dangerous emotions mm -hmm. that that control their behaviour, and therefore you know oh, is the media like, um, or are these people kind of exploiting women's desperate feelings of uh, loneliness or need for children? Or it, That's the rhetoric, isn't it? And I think, well, uh, isn't it like perfectly normal and natural to have like vulnerable and deep emotions about having a family? That's it's a large decision. But it's the idea that because it's emotional and, be and because it's like about family and feelings or, but that's what it's perceived as that in some sense therefore we can't be making like informed sensible decisions because we're women right so right. Uh, we're emotional about it so we must we can't really be trusted mm -hmm. it's like uh, I think I can understand statistics and I can get my head around the probabilities and I know what you know, I know I get all of these parameters, and this is the decision that I'm making. Uh, why is everyone going crazy about it? I don't it? get it. I don't either. Did, I your, really, did your dad respond in a positive manner? If, like my, this is the thing. And actually, no, in fairness, what's really funny is my dad and my dad's wife, because um, my dad remarried after, after my mum died, um, a while after my mum died. Um, they both were really just like, yeah, do it, supportive of the idea. And in fact, they brought it up. They were like, oh, Helen, we'll, we'll give you the money. In the end, I, I didn't go to them. They, they were like, we're going to give you the money for that. And, um, and my sister as well, who w was a doctor and worked in uh, OBS and Gynae herself, and had and knew the realities of fertility, was like, well, yeah, that's kind of an obvious thing to do, fair enough. Um, anyone who knew anything kind of medically seemed to think it was, unless they were misinformed about the technology, seemed to think it was a normal decision. Men were like, oh yeah, yeah great idea, why not? They were <laughs> Quite a few men were like, do you want some sperm? Do you oh. need sperm? Were, were like, they trying to uh, offer up and give you <laughs> yeah, some, yeah, some rendezvous few. on the side? I've always like, when I've got, because I've been dating and stuff, like I always tell tell guys early on that I did that like and so you my, do and tell them pretty early that you yeah okay yeah. say oh yeah I had my eggs frozen last year and because it's like it's quite like oh well that sounds like a sensible idea and you know one of my exes um got in, back in touch with me just after I'd done it and he was like oh do it again do it again do it again like yeah just get them all stored you know like didn't think None of the guys that I'm, I met actually have ever thought it was a big deal. But do, do. They, do you think they really understand everything, or did you have to think, spend some time educating them on what it? I just, it's not I, as easy well, as just taking the eggs out of you, obviously. Like it no, is. No, probably probably don't really get it. But I think that it's the fact that conceptually they're like, oh, you can like freeze your eggs so that you have like good quality eggs for later. That makes sense. It was female friends. It was female friends that were like judgmental. Well, yes, they said, "Well, I've had that too, actually." So I kind of <laughs> know that feeling. Where they're like, "Oh, that was unnecessary. Why'd you go waste all your money doing that?" Yeah. Well, I guess because a lot, actually, a lot of the time when you interrogate that further, they'll say, "Well, I couldn't afford that." Right. And then, right. There's a little bit of 
angst there Not where I need to do it like why are you doing that it doesn't yeah. isn't it because I couldn't do it you shouldn't do it like Should. it's a it's a competition sort of yeah. and I think there's a lot that's in the rhetoric in the I don't know, I think that's a little bit what goes on in the newspapers as well. It's yeah, like not everyone yeah. can afford it. So therefore, the people that can, we shouldn't support them. I just don't understand, though, because more people that take advantage of it and the more uh, commonplace it becomes, the more affordable it becomes for everyone yeah. and it becomes a standard uh, benefit. So I think yeah. we're shooting ourselves in the foot by not supporting each other in that. The other thing that I find, um, and I don't know if you found this, but I found amongst women, and like I say, most certainly not amongst men, was that um, they would say, when I said, oh, I'm going to get my eggs frozen, they'd try and tell me that I might meet someone. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm aware of that. <laughs> I'm Great. Like, well, that is what happens. Right. I don't understand why that's relevant. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, because uh, <laughs> we could still make babies if we meet, but... Yeah, yeah. Let's make and sure I, it gets I, to that level first before we commit to. And also, I know people. I know more than one person that got married not that long ago who uh, is in IVF for whatever reason. Mm. So even if you meet someone, it's not that doesn't it's mean that they have great sperm yeah. quality. Yeah, and it doesn't mean that you know your eggs because I I might might have been even lower, you know, I might have, I might have been older in fertile age, so I might have been struggling at the age of 35, 30, so, you know, you don't know. Right. So, um, you, yeah, you just don't know, but the idea that, that's what I think is really sad, is that the idea that, because I said I was going to have my eggs frozen, that in some sense that meant that I was admitting defeat, mm. whereas I, I felt the opposite, I just felt like it was like showing my kind of commitment to the universe, that that I was taking this shit seriously and I and I really wanted it. And um I you know, agree. and then just that is a well said statement. <laughs> You've definitely thought yeah. this out. I yeah, love that. Because I I found it like really flabbergasting the way I was spoken to about as if I was giving up and also as if I was sort of emotional and not making like an educated and I've, and I've met so many people that read these bloody articles and then have said, oh, I'm thinking I might not do it because I was thinking of doing it, but now I'm thinking I won't because, like, it doesn't really work. And, and so I was like, uh, actually, if they've got, like, they've got eight of my eggs from before I was 35, so I've got a good 50-50 chance of having a baby out of those eggs. Um, and it only and, takes one. Yeah. And... Like, but the, I read in Grazia magazine the other day, which is a UK magazine. Yeah. This woman saying in the column, oh, it's only a 2.5% success rate. So someone's hearing that and thinking, you've only got 2.5% chance of having a baby out of those eggs. Of course, success means... A live birth. Birth rate. Yes. But it doesn't count all the women that never even used the eggs. Or <laughs> made embryos and froze them again. Yeah, exactly. It's, so it's it's sad so, because the statistics don't really explain what's actually being recorded, and so we hear a number and we think that's what we're getting. But it's crazy because actually it's more like fifty fifty. So for me, it's like fifty fifty is like a nice insurance, but not sure enough that I would become like, oh, well, I can leave it now until I'm 45 and just right. chill out. <laughs> right, you're still conscious about it. You're still proactively searching for your forever partner yeah. and, yeah, and yeah. want to do it the so traditional so route, but so just have an insurance I, policy. Even if I was going to do it on my own, which I hope doesn't happen, but I would still be considering trying to do that within, like, my natural period of time just because I don't right. I don't want to rely on the eggs. But equally, 50, you know, like a good 50, 58 eggs out there is, is, is you know, it's a nice little insurance to have in place, I feel. I agree. Uh, but, yeah, the way people talk about it is just insane. And the idea that you have your eggs frozen because you don't think that anyone's going to marry you. <laughs> Which is really <laughs> comical, right? Yeah, it's mind blowing. They don't. We don't have to get married anymore. Right. But it's almost created this thing where, but men still feel that they need to be in a certain place before they can give themselves to a family. That they need to be established. So where before 
they would be forced to get married and make something of themselves. So they're taking that and they're going after like their dreams before they're willing to commit. Whereas it used to be that we would all have to commit and then make and something then do that that together. Right. But so I feel that a lot of the time it's sort of, it's not that they're really deeply cynical. It's that they are like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to sort of establish my status and then I'll date you and be nice to you. All right. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, no, no, don't do that. <laughs> We'll be here forever. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> while we wait on you to get your status updated, <laughs> love it. Yeah, you can't. well, you've been just a complete pleasure to talk with. Um, I think your story is very inspirational, and um, I really appreciate you talking about how your journey and how you've gotten here. And obviously, it's not over. It's still very much. Um, on its way fellas i'm still i'm still on the market so hello hello. hashtag single (laughs) (laughs) love it (laughs) love it girl love it excellent i've got footballing jeans in my family too i'm an excellent person to mate with (laughs) (laughs) and you sound fine and energetic (laughs) and you have a great career So it yeah, sounds like you uh, <laughs> you have lots to offer. So we'll make sure to put you on the market, <laughs> broadcast it worldwide. Helen is out there, <laughs> out there with great, absolutely great jeans. That's right. That's right. No, well, good. do you have um, any last thoughts that if someone is debating on whether they should freeze their eggs, that what you would tell them? What would you, what would you tell that concerned woman that is debating either way? I think it's the same as what I would say on Timeless because I think it's, or what I did say on Timeless, which is that you can trust your emotions on this. That I, th- I think that when we feel that we feel deeply emotional about something, uh, we've been taught that we can't trust ourselves. And actually it's the opposite. It's that the more you don't listen to yourself, the, then that's when you make the mistakes, right? So there's a difference right. between being overwhelmed with the emotion and allowing that to sort of take the driver's seat so that, you know, you can't kind of conceptualize, you know, you're just panicking, yeah? And understanding and listening to your really deep emotions about it, which are informative and communicative and will really guide you, you know, and those, so allowing some space and silence to just listen to what's right for me, because some women I know are like, I'm okay with that risk. I'm okay if it doesn't happen for me. I don't want to fork out six grand for it. I'm, you know, I'll take that risk, you know, and that's great for them. Um, I wasn't, so that's why I went with it. I was like, nah, doesn't sit well with me. You know, so you've right. got to listen to yourself. Right. So the takeaway yeah. is just not, to follow your heart. They're not, yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. <laughs> well, that's really great. So glad we met. <laughs> yes, me too. Always good to talk to someone who gets it, I guess. Right, (laughs) like-minded women. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for taking some of your time today. Great. Well, thank you. you. 